Despite serious investigations into the crimes committed by the Nazis during World War II, the existence of brothels in concentration camps was kept silent until the 1990s. In Soviet and European historiography, this topic was virtually non-existent. Only a couple of American scholars, Wendy Gert Jensen and Jessica Hughes, raised some aspects of the problem in their scientific works. In 1942, Reichsfuhrer S.S. Himmler was concerned about increasing the productivity of slaves in concentration camps and he decided to introduce houses of tolerance in the camps to give diligently working prisoners the opportunity to visit a brothel and enjoy the company of a woman. Himmler cynically believed that prisoners would work more efficiently after such encouragement. It is hard to believe, but the subject of prostitution was taboo in Germany. In Hamburg alone, during the six months of Nazi rule, about 1,500 women accused of prostitution were arrested. They were caught on the streets and sent to camps. Torture and death or prostitution. This was the choice the Nazis put before the European and Slavic women who found themselves in concentration camps. From those several hundred women who chose the second option, the administration staffed brothels. Spanish Lola Casadel, a member of the resistance movement, who was imprisoned in a concentration camp in 1944, recounted how the head of their barracks announced, whoever wants to work in a brothel, come to me, and be warned, if there are no volunteers, we will have to use force. The first brothel for prisoners was opened in June 1942 in the Mauthausen camp in Upper Austria. Later brothels were opened in most of the odious concentration camps, Auschwitz, Buchenwald, Sachsenhausen, Dachau. Women were recruited mainly from the Ravensbrück concentration camp. They were mostly Germans, former prostitutes, homeless, and criminals. Jewish women were not taken, and Jewish prisoners were not allowed to visit the camp brothels. The women were promised good rations and freedom after six months of work. In reality, women who had worked in such brothels were sent back to the concentration camp. The prisoners were given 15 minutes to do the job. In each door there was a hole through which the SS warden watched the process. Talking and any communication was forbidden. In fact, the right to visit such establishments was mostly with camp guards from among the prisoners. And there is a logical explanation for this. Most of the male prisoners were exhausted so that no sexual attraction was even thought of. Jessica Hughes points out that the proportion of male prisoners who used brothels was extremely small. In Buchenwald, according to her data, where in September 1943 there were about 2,500 people, for three months, 97 prisoners visited the brothel. The situation was similar in Dachau, where, as of September 1944, the services of prostitutes were used by 165 people out of 22,000 prisoners held there. Army Houses of Tolerance appeared immediately after the beginning of World War II. On September 9, 1939, German Interior Minister Wilhelm Frick, in an effort to keep soldiers from committing crimes, ordered the establishment of brothels for the Wehrmacht in occupied territories. During the war, the Germans organized more than 500 brothels, divided equally between the Western and Eastern fronts. Women were brought to the Eastern front from Western Europe. For example, in Jitomir, the Germans opened a brothel with Dutch women, after cases of venereal diseases became more frequent among the troops in the city. Soon there was a shortage of Aryan women. Then the occupation authorities began to staff the brothels with local women. Applicants for work had to speak German, and their appearance had to be as close to the Aryan standard as possible. As a rule, in stationary brothels worked local women, in France, French women, in Poland, Poles, in the USSR they took everyone, but especially valued racially related Latvians and Lithuanians. But there were not enough stationary houses of tolerance for everyone, and not two Nazis trusted the local priestesses of love. Therefore, the troops drove behind them brothels on wheels, staffed by pure-blooded Aryan women. In the diary of General Galder, there is the following entry. Current problems. POW camps are overcrowded. Tankers require new engines. Troops are moving fast. Brothels cannot keep up with the parts. 
Candidates for the mobile brothels were strictly screened for racial purity. Only Germans, Dutch, Danes, and Norwegians worked there. There were many Germans who worked not so much for money as out of patriotism. Army prostitutes were considered employees of the Ministry of Defense, had a decent salary, insurance, enjoyed benefits. A German soldier was given six coupons per month to visit a brothel. In addition, the commander could give a coupon to a soldier who had distinguished himself as a reward or, on the contrary, deprive him of a coupon for a misdeed. Allied soldiers, Italians, Hungarians, Romanians, Slovaks, were not allowed into German brothels. They had to make their own way. Only Hungarians were able to organize a semblance of German field brothels. At the beginning of the 21st century, German culturologist Robert Sommer began meticulously restoring information about the sexual conveyors that operated in the horrific conditions of German concentration camps and death factories. The result of nine years of research was the book Brothel in a Concentration Camp, published by Sommer in 2009, which shocked European readers. Given that this topic has been hushed up for many years, it needs to be talked about. As Inza Eschebach, head of the memorial for the former Ravensbrück camp, said, It is one thing to say, I worked as a carpenter, or I built roads, and quite another to say, I was forced to work as a prostitute. Help spread this video. Subscribe to my channel. Give me a like and write a comment.